Moving on now from permanent data storage, we're going to see in this video how we can create multiple view controllers and allow the user to segue between them. That is to tap on a button and go from one view controller to another. That's a pretty fundamental skill as an iOS app developer. You usually want to have more than one screen on your app, as we're definitely going to need in the to-do list app that we're going to create in a couple of videos time. So we'll call it multiple view controllers. Save it in the desktop. And we'll jump over to the storyboard. Let's remind ourselves first of all what a view controller is. It is something that controls the view here, which is the screen of our app. Now, one thing you may have noticed, but we haven't discussed before, is this little arrow here. And this arrow indicates where the app starts. So when you've only got one view controller, the arrow will definitely point to that one. But we're now going to drag in a second view controller, just like that. There we go. So we now have multiple view controllers. And if we want to, we can even click is initial view controller to make our new view controller be the one that appears when the app is launched. But let's switch that back to the original view controller for the moment. There we go. So the main thing we need to do with our new view controller is create a Swift file so that we can work directly with it. And we do that in the Xcode menu with file, new, and then file. And we want to create a Cocoa Touch class within iOS. And this is going to be a subclass of UI view controller because we want all the usual view controller functions. And you definitely want to give this a name which makes it very clear which view controller this is referring to. So I'm going to call this second view controller. But in a real app, you'd probably want to use the name of whatever function that view controller serves within your app. And then I'm just going to create the file right there within the app structure. And there we go. So we now have a second view controller.swift file. But of course, we need to link that to our new view controller so that we know that this second view controller links with our new view controller that we've created. It's been moved around for some reason, so let's just drag it back up. So I'm going to click on the view controller yellow circle there, and then we're going to jump over to the identity inspector. That is the one to the left of the select a custom class for that view controller. And now this second view controller is linked to second view controller dot Swift. So I can use this file to control the second view controller. Xcode seems very keen on moving my view controllers up and down. All right, so all well and good so far. Let's just check that they are indeed connected by printing something to the logs. Second view controller loaded, something like that. So this will be printed with any luck when the second view controller is loaded. And let's also bring in a label to the second view controller just so we know which one is which. There we go. I'm not going to worry about auto layout or anything here. And then we'll select that view controller back over to the identity inspector and let's make it the initial view controller. And then we're going to run the app and we should find not only that we see second view controller, 
but also that. Our second view controller, Swift file, is run, which of course it won't be because I've put that in the wrong place. So that should be in view did load, not did receive memory warning. Easily done. Now you can see we've got an error here, or at least a warning, that the scene is unreachable, which is absolutely valid. There is no way for the user to get to our initial view controller now. But that's fine. We're just testing things out. So let's have a look. And there we go. So first off, you can see second view controller up there. And if we have a look, it has indeed printed second view controller loaded in the console. So we have correctly linked up our new viewcontroller.swift file and our second view controller. All right, so let's give our initial view controller control of the app once again. And then all we're going to do now is just simply set up a buttons to link back and forth from the first view controller to the second. So let's just add in a quick label so we know which one's which. So that's our first view controller. And then we'll add in a button. Which will be go to second view controller. And setting that up is actually very, very easy. We just control drag from our button over to the second view controller. And this will allow us to show that second view controller. And you can see we've actually got a few different options for displaying that view controller. I'm just going to go for show. There we go. And We'll add the ability to go back again as well. So go back to first view controller. And we set that up in the exact same way. So control drag back to the view controller and show. And you can see that it's set up some arrows to indicate the existence of these segues from one to the other. All right, so let's just check and make sure that all works. And here we go. So here's our first view controller. If we tap that button, it takes us with any luck to the second view controller. And there we go. You can see it appeared there. And indeed, it ran the code which printed second view controller loaded to the console. And we can go back as well. Wonderful. There we go. All right, so that's as far as we're going to go with multiple view controllers and segues at the moment. Rest assured, you'll see a lot more of those in the apps that we'll be building in the rest of the course. But this is the basics of how you set them up and particularly how you link them up to new viewcontroller.swift files. All right, so we're one video away from making our to-do list app, which will be by far the most complex app that we've created so far. But there is a hole in our iOS knowledge so far, and that is about controlling the keyboard that we need to be able to allow the user to get rid of the keyboard or bring the keyboard in when we want to. So essentially, we need more control of the keyboard, and that's what we're going to learn how to do in the next video.